Hello, my friends. D.L. Anderson here. Welcome back to Transformation by Truth podcast as we share the truth concerning these last days and what you must do to save yourself from the violent times that are just ahead. Today's podcast is a word of truth accounting of the end times. The end is coming. The end is near. Today's podcast is entitled End Times 361, The Spiritual Disease of Disobedience, Part 1, The Progression of Disobedience. The podcast objectives are reveal how disobedience has plagued mankind, provide an analogy of the relationship between doubt and disobedience, and analyze the cost of non-compliance. This lesson contains timelines and other visuals. Therefore, if you are listening to the podcast, I advise you to watch the video version on our website or YouTube, or request a PDF of the lesson so you can add the visual effect. A sore evil that has plagued mankind. Shalom, my beloved brothers and sisters, and welcome to day 115 of our exposition of lawlessness. In the most recent podcast, we completed our intro to disobedience, i.e., the second of the 20 primary degrees of lawlessness. In that podcast, we analyze the importance of the divine order of Elohim and the critical factor of authority to establish a baseline for disobedience. To it, where there is no authority, there can be no disobedience. From now, we should analyze the progression of disobedience, for it is aligned with the progression of doubt. Hence, we should consider the progression of disobedience and doubt as a singular progression. Here is why. The same way, obedience is the application of faith. Doubt is the application of disobedience, i.e., the goal of doubt is to cause us to disobey. Ergo, if we have doubt, we will not only disobey, but we will continue in disobedience. It is inevitable. Listen to me. This is why eliminating doubt is so crucial, for it positions us to eliminate the most pervasive sin of all time. That is, the sin of disobedience. It, too, is a sore evil that has plagued mankind since the beginning. Perhaps the best way to understand the relationship between disobedience and doubt is by the analogy of an enemy nation. To wit, doubt and its degrees are the invading army of said nation. They are the conquerors. They are designed to penetrate, infiltrate, and destroy. As for disobedience, it is the fatherland. Vis-a-vis, -vis, it is the home base of the invading army of doubt. Along these lines, your first order of business is to deal with the invading army because they are at your door. They are in your backyard. And if you don't deal with them, they will conquer your nation. They will destroy your soul. This analogy reveals why we must deal with doubt first, for doubt is the invading army. And yet, the overarching war is not over once we eliminate and reign over doubt. Quite the contrary, the war carries on. Here is why. Even though you have defeated the invading army, 
the fatherland is still intact. And thus, if you fail to conquer the fatherland, they will eventually launch another invasion. And the army they send in that day will be seven times greater than the army you defeated at the first. Brothers and sisters, you must get this, for it is the most critical key to reigning over doubt and keeping your mind free. This is why I am mentioning it again after bringing it up in the most recent podcast, and I will likely mention it again. It is for the following reason. The primary reason why so many will fail to obtain the seal of Elohim is because they focus the majority of their energies and their strength in dealing with spiritual symptoms, for they fail to appreciate how the greater issue is the core disease. As it pertains to our example of the enemy nation, these individuals are going through terrific lengths and great pains to defeat the invading army. And yet, they are not taking out the enemy nation. They are not attacking the fatherland. And thus, the enemy nation, namely disobedience, will continue to send a new wave of invaders until he eventually wins. And due to the laws upon spiritual replenishment, he will always win eventually. And this, my friends, is the primary reason why disobedience is a sore evil which has plagued mankind for many, many years. It will cost you everything. Now, the question of the hour is, how will you overcome so great an evil? Well, for starters, you've already eliminated doubt, the primary application, i.e. symptom, of disobedience. You, my friend, have eliminated his army of invaders. From now, you must understand the association between disobedience and doubt, starting with the progression we introduced in the most recent series on faith and doubt. This progression reveals there are three phases of doubt, the questioning, withdrawal, and opposition. Consequently, these three are also the three phases of disobedience. The first phase in this progression is the questioning. As you have learned, the questioning is aligned with the fundamental degree of doubt, i.e. despair. Therefore, due to the parallel nature of lawlessness, the questioning is also aligned with the fundamental degree of disobedience. Enter non-compliance. By definition, non-compliance is failure or refusal to comply with a rule or law that is designed to govern an institution or society and to provide order and structure around their corresponding activities. This definition clearly reveals the insanity associated with non-compliance. And yet, this should come as no surprise, for we have already analyzed the irrational behavior associated with fear and how fear is a primary driver of despair. As for non-compliance, it is the primary driver of despair, and thus, despair is the primary application of non-compliance. To wit, the primary manner in which the spirit of non-compliance attempts to establish a stronghold within our minds is by causing us to despair. On this wise, despair, i.e. a degree of doubt, is the invading army, and noncompliance, i.e. 
a degree of disobedience is the fatherland. As you can likely see, here lies the problem, and a terrific one at that. And it derives from our definition of noncompliance, one of the many reasons why the Spirit has led me to define every degree of lawlessness. Consider this, my friends, and be advised. The rules and regulations the Father has established to govern the spiritual evolution of the invisible body of Yahushua Messiah are designed to ensure each assembly is dressed for success. This is crucial for you to understand and appreciate vis-a-vis -vis the commands of Elohim that he's given us via his word and his messengers. They are not grievous. They are not vexing. Brothers and sisters, the commands of Elohim are for our good, our eternal good. 1 John 5, 3-4 through 4 is revealing, for this is the love for Elohim, that we guard his commands, and his commands are not grievous, because everyone, having been born of Elohim, overcomes the world. And this is the overcoming that has overcome the world, our faith. Matthew 11, 28 through 30 reads, Come unto me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I shall give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and humble in heart, and you shall find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Now, these passages prove a key finding concerning the commands of Elohim and the burden associated with guarding them. Vis-a-vis, -vis, it's actually quite simple. It's actually quite easy. It's actually quite satisfying, and it's actually quite light. The problem is many will fatally consider the commands of Elohim with a faulty perspective reflective of the imposter of self and despair as opposed to the renewed personality that comes via hope. And thus, they will focus on the variation between their selfish desires and the desire of Elohim as opposed to the end result of each path. To wit, your fulfillment of the desire of Elohim will give you everlasting life, while your fulfillment of your selfish desires will give you endless death. Here lies the inflection and the reason why these individuals will always operate with a spirit of noncompliance. It is for the following reason, which I trust you have already picked up on, considering all we have learned about self in the prior series. The will of Elohim is diametrically opposed to the will of self. Therefore, it is impossible to obey the will of Elohim if you have not first eliminated yourself from the equation. Believe me, the spirit of noncompliance is not only hardened by despair, but it is also designed to increase your measures of despair and to keep yourself very much in play within your mind. That is, after a stronghold has been established. And although yourself may get everything he or she wants out of this life, in the end and after all, your soul will pay the price. Trust me, you may very well enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season, but each sin to you will cling. And at the judgment, you will find out just how much it cost you, and it will cost you everything. Selah. 
Now, here is the final word. A sad refrain that all should die, who clave the spare and won't comply. As I said in this lesson, it is a mystery and a sore evil that the majority of mankind has consistently lived beneath their privilege and they have worked against their best interest. To make matters worse, this self-defeating spirit has infected many within the extended nation of Israel. You'll know them first and foremost because they are not guarding the commands of Elohim, for they have been infected by the spirit of noncompliance. Not only this, but they are given to questioning the Most High, not realizing how this is the doorway to sin. And thus, when Yahuwah shall count, when he writes up the people that this man was born there, None of these shall enter in. Now, here is today's assignment. Meditate on the word you have heard today. And as always, ask the Father to reveal the truth to you. For the children of Elohim live by conviction. And if he has not convicted you, or if you had not heard him concerning these matters, you should pray until you do. Today, I want you to think about all the ways you are non-compliant regarding the commands of Elohim. I encourage you to write them down. And when you're done, ask yourself the following question. Why am I non-compliant? Why am I not guarding this command? Ideally, you are compliant, and so the exercise ends there. And yet, if you are non-compliant, it is important that you understand why. If you've been following the lessons, then you should be operating in hope, trust, and reliance. And so, the fault is something we should uncover in the upcoming lessons on disobedience. Until then, I encourage you to pray and fast as you are led by the Spirit concerning this matter and be willing to do whatever it takes to defeat the spiritual virus of noncompliance once and for all. Now, here is what's next. We completed today's podcast, in Times 361, The Spiritual Disease of Disobedience, Part 1. And the next podcast is entitled, in Times 362, The Spiritual Disease of Disobedience, Part 2. I will post this podcast on Friday, October 25th, 2024. Until then, my friends... Continue to be led by the Spirit of Elohim. Continue to watch. Continue to pray. Continue in fasting. And most of all, continue to be focused. For the end is coming. The end is near. Music